So the one that we have discussed is around here, UV visible, all right? And <laughs> of course, uh, apart from this, we also, uh, from us around the same region, we are also, uh, we can also have what we call as fluorescence and phosphorescence technique, okay? So what's the difference between forest, uh, UV, visible, and fluorescent as well as phosphorescence? So we are only discussing a very small part uh, from the electromagnetic spectrum, right? Right, so this one, I hope that by now, uh, we no longer have issues. <laughs> I hope that everybody has uh, mastered at least the orbital level, okay? The vibrational level, okay? So we have the main orbital, which is uh, electronic, uh, what we call electronic state one here. And then as it is called S naught, S, and this one S1, and this one S2, all right? So we talk about UV or ultraviolet visible. We are talking about Electronic transition means that the electron is <coughs> excited here, right? Or it is excited to another electronic transition, uh, electronic level. Okay, so that is UV visible uh, spectroscopy all about. It is due to uh, excitation of electrons uh, between the electronic excited states. Eh? And you also see there are certain uh, levels here, okay? There are certain uh, low energy uh, levels here. So if you, during undergraduates, you learn about suborbitals, but the, this one is vibrational uh, uh, energy levels. Eh? It is called vibrational energy levels. It is not uh, electronic energy level. So you have to know by now to differentiate, uh, to at least get to know what is vibrational uh, energy levels and electronic, yeah, electronic states uh, energy level. <clears throat> so I repeat again, for UV visible, it involves excitations of electron to different electronic excitation states and uh, you should know by now it will go down. Yeah? It will go down probably from, from S1 here to S0, okay, the ground state. And when it goes down, the relaxation process happened, then you're gonna have a photon emitted. Yeah? So uh, in UV visible, that's how you get uh, absorption as well as emission. And the amount of energy absorbed between these, uh, the difference energy being absorbed, if it falls down to the ground state, it should have the same amount of energy emitted. So let's say this electron from S0 jumps straight away to S2, okay? And then let's say it goes down to S1, then it should also have the difference of the exact energy uh, difference between S2 and S1. But if it is goes down to the uh, ground state, then it should have the exact energy difference be between S0 and S2, okay? So that is uh, involving UV and visible. So that one should be over by now, all right? Uh, but there is another one. Okay, there is another one, uh, um, optical related, which is uh, interesting because if you are working with protein, okay, fluorescence is very uh, a useful technique to uh, quantify or to uh, especially quantitative application. Yeah, right. So just now I mentioned about uh, vibrational level because we need to know this in order to understand the fluorescence, yeah? the principle of how fluorescence being produced, okay? Uh, okay, right. So uh, this, 
this uh, at least some uh, general statement on how fluorescence and what is uh, phosphorescence, okay? Electronic energy transition that is responsible for fluorescence does not change electrons, electron spin. It's okay. Uh, after this, we're going to discuss what is uh, the, the process of transition, which results in short-lived electron in the excited state of fluorescence. Whereas for phosphorescence, there is a change in electron spin, which results in longer time of the excited state second. And it means that <clears throat> uh, the electron will not go down as fast as fluorescence. Yeah? It's okay. Um, let's, uh, I think uh, this one is not to be uh, discussed, but unless you uh, have a question, let us discuss this one. Yeah? Okay, right. It's too big. Okay. Now, uh, the most important is this uh, diagram. Yeah? So it is called Jablonski diagram. Okay, you can Google Jablonski, J A B L O N S K, uh, K I, all right? So this is the difference, the biggest difference, if you want to discuss how fluorescence is being produced compared to uh, UV and visible uh, production, okay? So this electron from the S naught, okay? And you can see from here, if it, if it, if it is, if it receive energy, it, could, it can go to another excited, uh, what we call as electronic uh, excitation, <clears throat> just like this one, uh, electronic state, okay? Electronic state, right? And then what happened here is the, the, the small lines here, okay? They are vibrational level, <clears throat> okay? So you can see if you have, from S naught, okay, it goes directly to another electronic state higher of higher energy, okay. So if it goes down, you have UV or visible, okay. But what happened? What happened if you have a uh, electron excited from S naught to S one, okay, the first electronic state or the first uh, orbital, okay? And what happened if it does not, okay, go directly to, if it is, does not go directly to the ground state, okay? But you can see that it has different wavelength. You can see here, let's say, I'm, I'm pointing this, uh, this line yeah, here, okay? So let's say, uh, okay, let's say uh, this, the, let's say, uh, let, let's look at another example. Okay, if S naught, okay, electron from S naught, okay, excited to the orbital uh, second, uh, orbital, which is S2, okay? And then what happened is it does not go down back to the S0. Instead, it goes down uh, slowly through the vibrational level, okay? You can see here there are uh, vibrational levels, okay? So this is what called vibrational relaxation, okay? So if you have learned about IR, if you know about IR, so this is where the infrared region is. It's about vibrational uh, relaxation, okay? Where the, that's why there is one picture showing you the vibrational uh, process of the, I'm moving. Oh no, sorry, sorry. 
Okay, this is what happened, uh, vibrational uh, level, okay, energy level, uh, means that the small line just now, okay. So when you have vibrational relaxation, okay, when you have vibrational relaxation you can see now the energy is not the same as the first being excited okay and it does not goes down straight away to the uh, original ground state level okay it goes step by step where you have vibrational relaxation uh, and this vibrant vib vibrational relaxation does not emit any photon okay just like uh, if you remember uh, the uv when it goes down it emits certain photon okay but for, for vibration vibrational relaxation there is no energy being emitted <clears throat> so when you have uh, this kind of process of fluorescence is Produce. So let's look at the, uh, the statement here. Absorption of UV radiation by a molecule excites it from a vibrational level in the electronic ground state to one of the vibrational levels in the electronic excited state. So this is what happened. The vibrational level from the ground state to the vibrational level uh, if it is S2, S2, or vibrational level of S1. Yeah? So this is the main orbital. This is the vibrational level. Yeah? This is the uh, electronic state. And then what's next? Okay, It will now be an excited singlet state. It might be S1 or S2. The molecule can then undergo vibrational relaxation, which is caused by radiationless, uh, radiationless transition. So uh, the electron decided not to go down back <laughs> straight away <laughs> to the ground state, but instead it has vibrational relaxation bit by bit, and this process does not uh, emit any photon. So what happened? Okay. How, how that happened, why it does not um, emit a one, a one shot photon. Uh, this can occur several ways, emission of an infrared photon to go to a lower excited vibrational state. So what happened is uh, this one, as I mentioned, this is where the region of infrared uh, electromagnetic spectrum being produced, okay? Right, and then uh, another uh, cause, another factors that producing the vibrational relaxation is when you have a collision. Yeah? Uh, when the molecule collide with another molecule, so there is a possibility that transfer of vibrational energy to another molecule, okay? So instead of going down in one shot, producing UV or visible uh, output or, or photon, it only triggered uh, to, uh, to undergo vibrational relaxation. So now you can see that the, en the energy difference is not similar with the one uh, when it was excited. Yeah. It's not similar. Let's say for electron from S dot to S one uh, vibrational level, when it goes down here, uh, the the energy level is not the same, and you can see it also does not go straight away to the S not. Yeah. So when this happen, this is what we call as we have fluorescence. Yeah. So you can see that fluorescence. Uh, they are a series of different lambda, 
different wavelength uh, being if it is emitted as fluorescence spectrum or fluorescent spectra. Okay. So what happened next is if you have uh, okay, once the molecule has okay, this one has reached the lowest vibrational state in the excited state, the molecule will release a photon of less energy that absorbed to return to the ground state. Okay, this is the one that we observe. Once it has achieved here, it will go down, but with less energy compared to the one it absorbed just now. So instead of uh, emitting the same uh, energy level being absorbed, it uh, emit lower energy, and then it is known as fluorescence. Yeah? And what is phosphorescence? So phosphorescence uh, is a bit uh, different. Okay, one thing, of course, uh, it was mentioned about the 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 spin just now. Okay, uh, okay. so this is uh, electron, and then excitation to the uh, electronic excited state S two. Okay. And we have a vibrational relaxation just now. Okay. Vibrational relaxation. It is also called internal conversion. Okay. Where the, the electron uh, drop from the uh, vibrational, different vibrational level. Okay and only involve infrared. And then when it achieves the lowest vibrational, it goes down to the uh, ground state. Uh, this is where fluorescence is produced. You can see the excitation absorb specific amount of energy, but when it goes down, it does not uh, emit the same amount of energy. So this one is called fluorescence. Uh, and then, uh, if we have what we call an internal conversion, uh, sorry, intersystem crossing, this is internal conversion, which is vibrational relaxation just now. If we have intersystem crossing, okay, it goes to what we call as triplet state. Just now, it's single states. Yeah, <laughs> this one triplet states. So let's look at the explanation. Okay. All right. So when the molecule is in the excited single state, or another another possibility can occur. Sometimes through collision, the spin quantum number can be changed, producing an excited triplet state. So if we are talking about uh, fluorescence, okay, yeah, uh, the spin of the electron does not change. But when we're talking about phosphorescence. Uh, the spin change. Eh? So the spin is actually um, the, the how the electron move uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise. So when this happens, the term intersystem crossing is used. The triplet state usually is of lower electronic energy, but higher vibrational energy than the single singlet state it came from. So let's look at the uh, uh, this one might be better picture or this one, right? I think this one is more, much better picture. I think there's something wrong with my slides. Okay, let's look at here, right? Okay. Oh, not the same. Let me move. Okay. So what happened is, uh, it, once the uh, there is a collision, collide. Uh, maybe you put some other extra molecules, or there are some um, matrix effects okay, or interference inside the sample. Okay, it might interfere with the energy of the electron, so it 
can have what we call as internal conversion system. Yeah? It goes to the okay. It goes to uh, another system, okay, where it has higher vibrational level, <laughs> okay, from the singlet state, uh, from its original singlet state, okay. So the spin now is different. And then you can see that uh, it will, of course, undergo uh, relaxation. But it stays here. I mean, the, the phosphorescence okay, is produced later than fluorescence. Okay? Uh, it usually being produced late because this uh, this uh, state of uh, electron is much stable. So it stays here longer compared to uh, those electron that is in the uh, singlet excited states okay okay so uh, I think just just to check out whether you uh, can at least uh, understand <laughs> what I'm talking about since Hassan uh, you are going to use uh, the fluorescence uh, yes, yeah what do you understand from, from now, what? My question is here. Mm, mm. Before, before mm. any before a compound uh, goes to fluorescence, must it go and must it undergo absorption under fluorescence before it goes to fluorescence? Yes. Uh, All right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Mm. When we do, uh, uh, so you understand uh, the process of how it change from yeah. absorption to fluorescence. Yes, I do. I. Uh, yeah, I think I can. I think I. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yes, so you. okay. Hopefully, uh, because of course it's quite difficult because this is something that we don't see with our eyes. Eh? Oh, yes. But it's about energy. It's about electron being transferred, and you can also imagine uh, the energy level inside the atom or the molecule. There are so many energy levels, and this is what they. Uh, can happen, yeah? that can happen to the electron. Yeah? It's either UV visible, okay, or instead of you having UV or visible uh, absorption or emission, it does absorb, of course, but it is being emitted as fluorescence. Okay, and then uh, there is another process that can happen to the electron, and it can also emit phosphorescence. Yeah. If you have any question, just stop me. Okay. So it's not easy for me to <laughs> uh, discuss on this unless you have to do some study. Okay. After this, we, we will view uh, a video, a YouTube video to at least assist you on understanding fluorescence and phosphorescence. So we talk about fluorescence as phosphorescence. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to ask uh, this uh, the difference mm. between uh, UV and the fluorescence in yes. terms of in terms of the vibrational relaxation. Yes. Is there is there no vibrational relaxation in UV? UV no, there is no. Okay. Okay. Uh, meaning that uh, if you have like electron excited from here. Let's say from S naught to S one. Let's say S naught to S one, and you decide. And then, if there is no vibrational relaxation whatsoever, it should go down, emitting the the same photon. amount of photon. But if there is a vibrational vibrational relaxation, then now it is no longer emission of UV or visible. It is uh, emitted as fluorescence. Okay, so because in, you, yeah, in fluorescence, mm -hmm. in fluorescence, mm -hmm. there, yeah, there is a uh, emission of photon when it is uh, coming down after the vibrational relaxation. Yes, after it receive it, well, after it reach here, you can see, uh, okay. it it low, it has 
achieve the lowest vibrational relaxation. Okay. But you can see that the energy is not similar to the one that previously received. Yes. Yeah? Yes. And now you can see that it is emitted as fluorescence. Uh, it is uh, obviously different because you can see the lambda is also different. Yeah? If it is goes down here only, this is another vibrational, different vibrational level that you also might observe. Uh, it does not, you know, uh, emit exactly the one that it absorbed, okay, because it has lost some of its energy here and it is emitted as fluorescence. Okay. <laughs> It's okay, you can ask questions. I know that this one is a bit... Mm. <laughs> I mean, we, we can observe the, the fluorescence. Uh, it's easier. You, can, you know when you get fluorescence. Uh, it, uh, some fluorescence, you don't... You will not be able to look at it with naked eye sometimes. Eh? Uh, if it is visible region, you can uh, look at it, whether it's red color, blue color, uh, green color clearly, but if it is fluorescence, if you don't observe under uh, suitable condition, you will not observe the fluorescence. Yeah? <clears throat> okay, and uh, you should know also that the fluorescence is produced due to two uh, uh, factors. Okay. Uh, one is uh, there is uh, a molecule, another molecule uh, collides and there is a transference of vibrational energy to another molecule. And it might also, uh, the electron decided not to go down <laughs> a straight away. Uh, it, it goes through vibrational relaxation and that one is observed under infrared uh, region. Yeah? <clears throat> So these are the processes. Okay, uh, so this one example of phosphorescence. Okay, so th the difference between fluorescence and phosphorescence is you just now uh, 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 observe that it, it has what we call as uh, internal transition, just not, not to say. Internal intersystem crossing, yeah, intersystem crossing, where it goes to higher level, higher vibrational energy level from its single state. <clears throat> this one, uh, uh, let me go back. Okay. If you observe here, if if it is until uh, the vibrational relaxation and it achieved the lowest vibrational relaxation and start to go down, you have fluorescence. But instead of it goes down, it, go, it jumps to another higher vibrational uh, level. Okay, and This is called uh, triplet states. And it stays here a bit longer before it goes down uh, where you get Phosphorescence. So, as I mentioned before, phosphorescence usually produce a bit late. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I think that's enough to to under understand how the fluorescent is being uh, produced. <clears throat> so let's look at what kind of uh, molecules. Yeah? What kind of molecules that's involved in fluorescence? So this is uh, usually Okay, how we measure uh, the efficiency, efficiency, efficiency of the fluorescence uh, of that particular molecules. Yeah? So we use quantum yield, ratio of number of molecules that luminescence to the total number of excited molecules. So this has to be, I mean, you have to do some experiments and do some calculation, but this is what we use to uh, calculate for quantum yield. So for, for UVVs, we use uh, the Beer's, uh, the beer Lambert, yeah, okay. But this one, we use quantum yield, right? <clears throat> this one, okay. 
Uh, this one, okay. This is the difference. Uh, uh, when we do uh, fluorescence, okay. Uh, and then for, uh, or phosphorescence, okay. You can see uh, your question just now mentioned about did the, the electron has to go excitation uh, under UV or visible region. Uh, or absorption, yes, it has to absorb okay? a certain energy okay? uh, before it can emit okay? in the form of fluorescence. Okay? So that's why uh, when we do fluorescence, we have to study two wavelengths. So we call excitation wavelength, means that the energy being absorbed by the compound, of course, the electron, okay, the excitation, and that with that excitation, it can emit fluorescence. And this is called emission, emission energy, okay? Sorry, emission wavelength, okay? So excitation wavelength, emission wavelength, okay? So this one, uh, you have to study because uh, it's about energy sometimes if you excite the wavelength uh, the the wavelength is not correct okay it's not enough then you will not be able to get fluorescence uh, peak so uh, the first thing that you you uh, should study is what is the excitation wavelength before you can get the fluorescent or uh, the emission uh, wavelength yeah emission spectrum. And you can see that phosphorescence, of course, has a lower, much lower energy where the wavelength is around here. Do I make sense? <laughs> Everybody? How, how will you know the excitation wavelength? Is it from, from the literature? Okay, usually if you're doing something uh, I mean, quite common chemicals, of course, you can get it from the literature. And of course, you have to try the instruments. You excite it with uh, the wavelength suggested by the literature, whether you get the, the fluorescent spectrum. Okay. And sometimes due to the different uh, brand or the different like source of the fluorometer, you might get different uh, emission wavelength. Okay. Uh, there's, of course, there are possibility. You have to try and uh, do tr some try and error. Okay. All right. Uh, can I mute you? <laughs> if you have questions, just uh, like you can stop me. So, what are the uh, prob? Not to say problems. What are the factors yeah? might be affecting the reading of fluorescence? Okay, uh, there are some issues if you have halogens, okay, if you have oxygen um, in your solution, because those things, uh, those halogens and oxygen can absorb energy. So if you have uh, um, the solution, usually what we do is to, to, to degas everything, uh, you, you, flow in nitrogen so that you can remove the oxygens, okay? So that uh, it will not cause decrease in fluorescence. Because if you do quantitative analysis, if you have a decrease in the intensity of the fluorescence, then it will like uh, affect the accuracy of your calculation, yeah? So this is the most, uh, the problems that we usually uh, face when we do fluorescence analysis, okay? And this is examples of fluorescence compound. <clears throat> you can see we have discussed about chromophore, uh, how electron uh, is uh, moving around the, 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 what we call it, delocalized huh? uh, around the, uh, double bond, triple bond, okay? 
So fluorescence increase for chelating agent bound to bed to metal. Okay, this one, I, I don't know. Uh, sometimes it just happens uh, when we chelate. Yeah? So for example, we have uh, this uh, fluorescent compound. And then when we bind it with metal, uh, it seems to have uh, affecting some uh, metal, sorry, it seems to have affecting uh, the fluorescence intensity. Sometimes it, it, it increase, sometimes it decrease. So I don't know all about <laughs> whether which atoms has uh, increasing uh, properties or which one will decrease. But I do observe that once we have the uh, fluorescent reagent, and then when we bind with uh, certain metals, it does have fluorescence increase uh, property. Okay, I, do, I don't know why. Okay, fluorescence, okay, rigid structure, okay. Uh, so we can see that uh, the one that has strong fluorescence, you can see that it has um, rings, okay? Uh, benzene rings um, in terms of structure because I'm not organic chemist. I don't know uh, the, what's the difference between these uh, rings. What's the biggest difference that make it uh, do not exhibit fluorescence, whereas this one have strong fluorescence. Okay, uh, probably we can study together. Fluorescence especially favored for rigid structure. So in terms of organic, I don't know why this one are rigid, and this not this these are not rigid structure. So uh, I cannot explain on that matter. Uh, okay, these are another uh, fluorescence. Uh, compounds, okay. Uh, you can see what I can observe if you have like um, a series of benzene ring, then uh, there is a possibility of strong fluorescence. Yeah? Uh, they are uh, if, uh, effect of temperature, okay. The quantum uh, efficiency of fluorescence is most, in most molecule decrease with increasing temperature because uh, if we have high temperature, uh, we know that the molecules will collide uh, because of the kinetic energy of the molecules. It will collide more. So, um, so when we have uh, the energy interfered, huh? uh, interfered by the uh, external factors, then you might have. Uh, an effect towards the fluorescent, okay, what we, we call it uh, quenching. Uh, it's not really quenching, but uh, it might, uh, uh, what we call, this is not the act deactivation. This is like the system now is haywire, <laughs> okay? So that's what happened when we increase the, the temperature where you have kinetic energy is higher than uh, the original uh, solution. So I don't know, probably you can, when you do uh, fluorescence, if you do fluorescence, okay, you can try to uh, warm up the solution and look at whether you have that effect or not. Huh? Uh, because we don't do uh, uh temperature effect, most of the time I don't do temperature effect when I do fluorescence, so I don't know, I never come across with this one. Okay, uh, solvent effect, so fluorescence is decreased by solvent containing heavy atom, as I mentioned just now. Uh, uh, atoms can reduce as well as it might increase the intensity of the fluorescence. And again, I don't know how or which metals can reduce and uh, which metals have the effect of uh, higher in to increase the intensity of the fluorescence. I don't know which one. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, so now look at the uh, the structure. So we have uh, last week look at the struct look at the general uh, instruments of UV and then visible as well. 
UV visible, and then we look at the uh, plate reader, okay, where you use ELISA plate. And I also showed you the fluorescence spectrophotometer, and the biggest difference is the 90 degrees. Yeah? Because if you have UV, this is, is parallel, it's supposed to be parallel. But for UV, this is 90 degrees. Okay, so you can see that this is the light source, right? Okay, and then you, you have all those uh, monochromator, right? I know this is the filter, uh, of course, sometimes they have more than one filter. <laughs> this is also monochromator set, and you have the samples, but instead of having the light source here, where you have parallel, uh, you have uh, a 90 degree set, and this is where the detector. Okay, so uh, fluorescence, of course, uh, depends on the supplier, depends on the brand. Okay, uh, the setup is different. Okay, right, but this is basically what happened. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, the most important is. Uh, when you do fluorescence, uh, as you know, uh, we have discussed uh, the visible spectrophotometer, you can use tungsten, tungsten light, whereas for UV, uh, you have to use a higher energy, uh, uh, and the one that I know is deuterium. There are other light source as well. But for fluorescent, you have to use a much more expensive light uh, this one is an example, xenon lamp. Okay, so without uh, a proper light source, you cannot have the uh, fluorescent uh, working. Yeah, so you you, you need to have a very uh, high energy light source. So the rest are similar. You have monochromators. Sometimes you have one. Uh, okay, because you have excitation and emission, so you have two monochromators here. So this is where the sample, you can see again, uh, it is 90 degrees, okay? <clears throat> so this is the detector. All right, uh, okay. So you can see that uh, for fluorescence, you need to have two wavelengths, okay? The excitation wavelength, okay? Where you should absorb energy and the emission wavelength where the fluorescence spectrum will appear, okay? So uh, if you are just do, doing visible, uh, UV visible only, you only uh, concern about excitation only or only the absorption wavelength only. But for fluorescent, you have to study both. Eh? Uh, you need to know the excitation as well as the emission. <clears throat> but for those who, uh, study uh, molecular, okay, uh, sorry, for those who study protein, yeah? protein analysis, uh, sometimes you have the, the, the machines, yeah? the machines uh, is already fixed with the wavelength of interest. So uh, that one, is quite useful, so you don't have to like study which one is the best, uh, which one is the best excitation wavelength, which one is the, uh, then you need to study whether that will give you the the best emission uh, lambda yeah, of the fluorescent. So depends on the setup. Yeah? I think I have another slide just to share with you on the application. This one I have shown you. Uh, right. Okay, this one I did mention about the effect of oxygen. Okay, usually uh, oxygen is the uh, biggest culprit. <laughs> That's why you have to degas the sample. And this is an example of uh, uh, fluorescent spectrum. 
okay, or spectra here because you have absorption, excitation, wavelength, you have absorption, and then you have the emission. So this is, uh, you know, we consider it as a not so good uh, um, fluorescent spectra because it overlaps with the absorption. So Stoke shift, okay, is the difference in uh, wavelength or frequency depend between position of the uh, maximum absorption, which is the purple one, and the emission spectra uh, or the fluorescence, okay. So when system is a it gains energy, okay, blah blah. This is what we have uh, discussed just now, okay. So when we look at here, the Stoke shift is not big, so we wish to have a much better one, okay. So we should have, uh, we should know, uh, we should we should optimize eh, uh, the wavelength so that we get a, a better separation instead of uh, this one is overlapping, so which is not good, okay, for quantitative purposes. So the other one that I would like to show you is example. Okay, so this is Alzheimer disease. And we know Alzheimer's disease is due to the uh, protein developed uh, inside our brain. So this is the protein. Okay. Uh, example, so to treat or to remove the protein is quite difficult because um, of the blood brain barrier. Uh, if we are to introduce drugs on our, uh, into our brain, it is very difficult because of the barrier, okay? Uh, but now uh, they managed to, tag, uh, to test whether you have a very good uh, delivery of drugs into the, um, into the brain. So they tag with certain uh, fluorescent dye uh, so, so that you know uh, how efficient the drug is being introduced to the uh, brain. Yeah? So this is an, one example. Uh, you can see that now the stock shift, yeah? the difference uh, is much better. Uh, so this is what we want uh, if we are working with fluorescence. Yeah? So these are all examples. There's a lot more, of course, examples of uh, fluorescent uh, usage, especially if you're working with uh, protein. Yeah? So uh, now it's the 3.33. So let us finish by discussing uh, your uh, assignment. <laughs> okay, and let me stop recording.